college is supposed to be a time for experimentation, new adventures, and new excitement. But be careful just how much experimentation and new adventures you take part in. They could stay with you for upwards of seven years. I'm Melissa Blaustein for Cal TV Investigates, and this week we'll take you inside the changes in the Student Code of Conduct at Cal and what they mean for you. Football games are one of the most common places that students receive citations for violations of the Student Code of Conduct. But what will that violation mean? A minor in possession or drunk in public means a meeting with the Student Conduct Office. Generally how it works is a student will get something called a notice of possible violation saying that um, an incident occurred and they're being investigated for potentially violating the code of conduct. So um, a student who gets this paper has no idea what's going on. So they'll come into our office and we set them up with a caseworker who kind of works with them with um, from beginning to end of the process. And they'll do things like go to their meeting with them and advise them on things they should or shouldn't say, how they should present themselves and things like that. But you still have to go to the student conduct office. So my role and the work of our office and our team here um, essentially goes hand in hand one, with one another. Um, and what we essentially want to do is to work to create a community and an environment that promotes and supports academic excellence um, and is also safe for the members of the community. And the conduct office is making some big changes. So, most of the changes are actually positive and in favor of students. Um, a lot of it is having to do with the hearing process. And they are changing their name from Student Judicial Affairs to the Center for Student Conduct. They are making notification online rather than by mail. They are changing language in the hearing process and they're providing a new hearing option. One of the big changes that's happening is that the Center for Student Conduct is no longer presenting a case against the student who's being charged with a violation. The complainant who, if it's a UCPD case, is a police officer or maybe a GSI professor in a cheating case, will come and sort of present the facts of the story from their point of view. But it's not all good news. One of the changes that is not necessarily positive for students is that because of the Clary Act, which is a national act about criminal records, Records are being kept for seven years now instead of five. If they do end up in a situation where they have a conduct record, then I would encourage them to always be truthful um, when they're asked questions about their standing and their status with regards to behavior on campus. But there is a loophole. Right now the code does allow an option for the dean of students to make a decision to purge a record earlier than that seven years. So that is an opportunity that would could be considered if they have an unusual um, request or some unusual circumstance that they want to put forward. Maybe if more students attempted to exercise this they would grant it more often. And what do students think about this? I think that minor offenses that stay on your record for a long time are not really they're not really productive. They don't really do anything. When you're in college People make mistakes. It's, it's a time in your life when you're discovering what the world is and the world is discovering what you are. I think they're good changes and as long as they're like really grave offenses, I think that people should have to suffer for them. I think it's good that people can speak for themselves. Um, the seven years seems like a long time. Despite the seven year record rule, the Student Advocates Office and the Center for Student Conduct seem pleased decisions. with the changes. But I think all of the changes um, that we're making to the Code of Student Conduct are positive for the students. This is intended to be a developmental process where we help people learn from mistakes that they may have made. So be smart, stay safe, and avoid a violation. And if you do happen to get one, because hey, it is college, go see the Student Advocates Office. For CalTV in Berkeley, I'm Melissa Blaster.